solution. Did you see it? What am I looking at? I'm seeing a lot. What are you talking about specifically? Okay, guys. The Prime Minister of Hungary. Go to 740 mark, and yeah. then when it pulls on the thing and it shows you like it, it flashes to the the UN whatever. Yeah. Pause right there and look at those two people. Okay, hold on. Hold on. You're gonna okay. lose your mind. You said 740 mark. 740. Okay. Okay, hold on. Okay, so what am I looking at? Hold on. Okay. What the heck is that? What is that? Wait, what's going on there? Do you see it? What is it? <laughs> Wait, what is that? It's a demon. Hold on, hold How on. Let me take that? this off the screen. Let me hold take this on. off the screen. Just How is that? That? This lady wearing a black mask over her nose and mouth. I don't get how that would be. <laughs> like, at the end of the day, like, because I do think this part should make it onto the recording. At the end of the day, like, prove us wrong. Prove us wrong. Like, I'm yeah. like, just show the. I guess <sighs> the evidence is not the right word, but like yeah. if you can make a heads or tail of why this is like a normal human face, prove us wrong. Like I'm okay, so I will. I'll 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 put this on right. I'll I'll put this on. We'll put this on. We'll have it on. We'll let that be the intro. But just so that people understand what we're looking at, we went to YouTube. We went to the NBC Nightly News February first. You have YouTube Premium. Yeah, of course. Ooh. Look at this guy. Of course. So we went to NBC Nightly News uh, February 1st. We went to the 746 mark in the broadcast where they start talking about Putin and the UN. They show this picture of the United States ambassador. Looks like, I guess that's in the Security Council. Yeah, in the Security Council. We could not figure out what this was. So I did a screen cap, threw it into GIMP. We... We expanded it to 400%. And honestly, somebody tell me that this is something besides. No, a, no, a no. It's just this lady, this ambassador, clearly wearing a black mask. A, a COVID with, a, mask. With, a, with a giant gaping mouth? <laughs> bigger than any human mouth? <sighs> this is so wild. The the skin the skin color is what's getting is I think I mean, the most convincing I thing mean, to me. The fact that the face and the arm skin color are so like the arm is brown, like it should be. The, that the skin, face is like, gray. Good night. <laughs> like the face is gray. Good night. What is Jason's position? He's like hmm? it's clearly something's oh. wrong. Yeah. Well, I don't know what to say, gentlemen. I don't know what to say, but I, I do not have an explanation for that. I sent it to, I sent it to Papadia. She's like, is that Darth Vader? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you for Star Wars, it looks like a creature. It does. Out of Star Wars. It looks like a like a, a Star Wars no George their, Lucas style character. Oh my gosh. You know what in the right mind thinks that that's like a normal woman. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know. I'm I really, don't know what yeah, I'm what stretching. camera couldn't do that. I'm really, really trying to see Ian's perspective. I can't, I don't know. I because I like I, I of course I've read equals hair blue equals face green equals mask what red equals oh he did he red equals hair blue equals face no no 
red equals hair. There's no way of looking at this and blue seeing equals anything. Face. I still don't. Then what is that on her hair? Oh, I see. <laughs> I don't know, man. <sighs> I don't know, man. This, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Something's wrong. That's all I'm going to say. Something's wrong. Something's very wrong. Very weird. Yeah, I don't know. <sighs> yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Those those with ears to hear, I guess. I I don't know. Is there anything in the? Oh, even if you look. Yeah. Okay. People so are people are in the comments saying people are in the comments of this thing saying why is that person wearing a mask at seven forty four at the seven forty even people in the comments are seeing it. Like the very first one. It's got 110 replies. It's got 563 upvotes. For real, why is no one else talking about it? So strange. People are like, what's going on? Seriously, what is that? I'm not saying it was aliens, but it's aliens. <laughs> like, everybody can see it. <laughs> everybody can see this. <laughs> it says the top half is hair. The mouth is actually her eye. And below that is a regular COVID mask that does nothing to protect against COVID. She's looking down. I don't the see mouth that at is all. her eye. The mouth is her eye. <laughs> That's her eye he's trying to say? What in the world? Stop it. Yeah. This is. Yeah. Okay, but so like nothing, nothing about her body even indicates that she's leaning down. I, I get, I, no, I see it though because if you go back, it's just her hair is not that big, but whatever. I mean, wait, so they're trying to say so what this now? They're yeah, trying so, to say what is her hair now? <laughs> what is supposed to be her hair? This is what we need, what? like a palate cleanser. We need a palate cleanser, and then we need to come back to this in like twenty. Yeah, minutes. yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll come back. We'll come back. We'll come back. I can't. I don't. I don't know what they're talking about. She's wild. It, down. All the body posture indicates she's like this. Yeah, she's not looking. It's not like this. How her shoulders. Like her shoulders would need to be turned. That's like what kind of an angle is that? She's doing. She's doing this with her hands. No, like, it's like that's she's what she, down. I think she's trying it. to say she's what she's like. How how do you even that's you can't even get that angle. What is that? Ang no, it's this. She's no. so okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> well. All right, Stuart's about to Stuart's about to weigh in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's let's get let's get to our let's get to our topic. Maybe this is a good good segue to the topic. I okay, mean, this is a good so little beginning. Should I do Everybody intro? can weigh in on this. Should no, we do it? Okay, that was right, the cool. intro. All right, cool. Because people will love to weigh in on this now. Yeah, people will definitely comment. I would love to, I would love to see somebody do a breakdown where they actually like take this out and very creatively try to show us, like maybe lighten it up, do something, show us yeah. what we're missing. Leaning you know. black father. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> Leaning black. Uh, okay. <clears throat> All right. All right. Well, that, that was fun. Uh, okay. I mean, even if we're wrong, I look, see, at the end of the day, I'm prepared to be wrong. Like, I'm okay with that. Like, yeah. if someone comes along and clearly breaks it down and, like, like, yeah, you can break it down. She's, she's doing this. The camera shot is just perfect to where the shadow of the jacket is expanding her hair, and it also happens to be like the kind of same color as her hair. Weirder things have happened. 
And weird things have happened. Like the shadow casting from her wig or something is like really darkening out her face. And it's a really big kind of oversized uh, COVID mask. And she's, she's doing this. And so the way that it just, it's just, it's, but it looks okay. like there's, it looks too organized. On I, I know, I know. It's just, it's a, it's a perfect, it's a perfect shot. But I'll go as far as to say, it's not either or, it's both and. That's right. I mean, that, <laughs> that, that was my next was point. To that. that was going to be my next point. I, I mean, because we were talking about. Uh, it's both and. <laughs> we were talking about last week with the Saints, how like they would just resemble icons right yeah like they would just yeah. like without even doing anything would just resemble icons <laughs> mm-hmm. well this this sort of brings to something on this topic as i've been thinking about so I, so we today are at um so we went and on the third day rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father mm-hmm and he shall come again with glory to judge living in the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. But we are at seated at the right hand of the father. Mm-hmm. And I, on thinking about this topic, I started, uh, I, I got on this thing where I, since we're talking about hands and we had talked about hands last week, mm. it got me like, Oh, this is a, this is an icon thing. Mm-hmm. Cause then, cause then I was like, Oh, the right, so then I started looking at all the like all the icons here, right? And I was like, mm-hmm. right hand, left hand. And I guess mm-hmm. I had never really done that. Mm-hmm. And it was, t- tell me, tell me if I'm, tell me if I'm getting close because obviously you're you're the person. But just tell me if I'm I'm getting anywhere close to this. What I was seeing was the the right hand is kind of blessing exter- external and having an action, mm-hmm. right? So blessing. Um, or there, oh, there's the Saint Cyprian was very interesting because he was giving a blessing hand, but it was mm-hmm. not out. It was pointed at the book in his, mm-hmm. I guess, is the gospel, gospel in his yeah, in his left bishop. hand. Mm-hmm. So he's pointed at pointed at it. I, so it's it was interesting that he was like internal, mm-hmm. um, whereas some of the others were like Saint Nicholas external. Mm-hmm. Um, the particular one, say the Saint Mary of Egypt here the same as also the St. Valentina and the St. Michael, they had a cross in their mm-hmm. left, in their martyrs, right hand. Because they're martyrs. Martyrs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, St. so Mary's, martyrs. St. Mary of Egypt's interesting because she'll be depicted with a cross, but technically when you have a cross that, that's a martyr, although she wasn't martyred in the sense of like being murdered for the faith, like that sense, mm. I think when you'll see those depictions of her holding a cross, it's because of the extreme martyrdom of her asceticism. But typically mm. speaking, we see the cross that someone is, is because they, they were a martyr. So just for that, just for- and, and so then the left, the left hand, I mean, I noticed uh, with the Ponto Crotter, mm-hmm. and then as I was looking at Ponto Crotter, and then I was looking at uh, Theotokos, the mm-hmm. two icons, like something kicked off to me that like, oh, in their left hand, both of them are holding the law. Mm-hmm. that's right like because she's holding christ mm-hmm. and he's holding the law right mm-hmm. so was, i was like my mind immediately exploded mm-hmm. i was like whoa <laughs> this is like yeah, yeah. super deep yeah, yeah. so then i thought maybe that's a good place to start jumping off is to talking about the right hand the, the symbolism of the right hand and then also obviously it relates to sovereignty because we think about mm-hmm. the right hand of a sovereign that's mm-hmm. going to be the prince or like his general mm-hmm. or the, the actor in the world anyway i thought that would be maybe a good place to start out since we have an iconographer here to talk about yeah i'm fascinated now now i'm like you know so so many more things opened up when i started to see that then i was like whoa this is yeah. all right here yeah that's a that's a real thing and uh it's funny too because part of the Part of the interesting thing about symbolic language and iconographic language and just symbolic language in general is being under is understanding the general principles of it, but without becoming too rigid, because it's it's a lot like I mean it's language right so in our own language because that's all I can really be an expert on right is like my own language, but there are moments where you, you know you have a basic working principle of English. But if someone's too rigid, then it becomes very difficult to 
it becomes very difficult for you to communicate across um, spectrums. It's hard for you to communicate outside of your silo, if you will, right? But if you have a mastery of the language, from my perspective, that, that also requires a kind of deft hand, a hand that doesn't hold things too rigid, right? So in other words, someone who is, you know, an English lit scholar, like knows grammar and all that stuff in and out, if they're a real master of the language, from my perspective, there's going to be a, maybe to the, the, maybe to someone, maybe to the average Joe, they might be surprised how adept and deft that DEFT, that person would be in regards to being able to speak with someone in a different dialect <clears throat> or like a, or a slang, right? So in other words, they know the language so well that when the rules are, when the rules bend or when they seem to seemingly contradict, they're able to track with it because they know the, they know the, the essence, the core of, of the language so well. Does that make sense what I'm saying right there? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, oh, I've, and I've seen that too. Like yeah, I'm, it's I'm super the, important. the, it's the super kid important. of English teacher. So I've watched that. I've watched that happen my whole yeah. life. Yeah. It's super important because, you know, there's, there's things like, for instance, um, like, you know, like, I don't know, like a few years ago, I was, I was reading a couple of books on like the phenomena of Ebonics, which is like, that's a whole nother politically charged thing. But there's this interesting thing where there's certain times in which the the moving of a language into a slang can actually bring out lost aspects of the original language you know what i mean um and so in in many ways it's a it's a lot like um i mean it's something i personally strive for as an iconographer you know but it's like um it's one of the reasons why uh the uh Rublev's trinity is so profound do you know what I'm talking about? Who loves Trin Trinity? Uh, can we screen share something? Yeah, can you, you, should, something you up? should do that. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you type in, just type in um, the hospitality of Abraham icon. Oops, just like, hold on. Type that in. Uh oh, lost you guys. No. No. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. I lost you for a second. Type in what now? Sorry, I went. I went. Uh, bye bye. The hospitality of Abraham Icon. Okay. Okay. Icon of the hospitality. Oh, yes, I have this one. Yeah. This is another one that I was looking at. I, I'll I'll pull up the exact one. You brought this to me, Father. Yeah. You, this is this is an icon you brought to me here. So we we have this uh, very prominently, uh, and it's I believe the closest one is it's pretty close to this. What you yeah. brought? Yeah, um, pretty close. This. Let's let stop me open the, this in a new tab. It's not the original, but that's a take. Let me let me uh, okay. let me try to find let me try to find the uh, let me try to find the original. But if, if you I could can. do if you could do two. Okay, yeah. Because there's one, uh, go back up. There's one where it's like, I mean, you can pick any of the ones where there's like- There's one things. down there with the priest and that's sharing the frame with it. I think it's still scrolling down, I go believe. Up. Is it up or down? Oh, this one? Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is closer. This is much closer to the is one he, I have. Is that the original father? Yeah. Or like, how about this? How about this? Yeah. There's two. Yeah, they got yeah, okay. This is good right here. This is you want me to do this one? Okay. Yeah, let me do that. open in new tab. Uh open image in new tab. Okay. Okay, let me see if I can get it any smaller. Okay. okay. How's that? Great. So okay. So this is kind of interesting actually because um this one here, um, the one on uh, the right or our left, you know, whatever, our, um, oh, yeah. the one with the multiple figures. So, so yeah. the icons, the, the hospitality of Abraham. And this one's interesting because it's an older, it's an older type of icon, um, which would look kind of like this one. But what it is, is Rublev, Andre Rublev, boiled the essence down of the icon to the three angels. 
He, he reduced it down. He simplified it. And this icon is, I mean, it's inspired because if you look at the angels, they even form a chalice. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. wow. They form, they form a chalice. And then in that bowl is, is, the, is, the, is a heifer, mm. right? the sacrificial heifer. And you see the one in the center is Christ giving his That's blessing. So it's, like, yeah. so it's like the, the father is looking at Christ. Christ is looking at the father. The father is also looking at the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's in green. The Holy Spirit's looking back to the Father. Um, mm. it, it's just profound. It's in it. It's so. It's so s- simple. Um, it's not crude. It's simple, right? Mm. Now, Rublev and his, and his inspired genius boiled that down to its essence and brought forth a profound theological insight that was there. In the, that was there in the other in the earlier type. But it was it was it was kind of obfuscated a little bit. Once you boiled it down, it brought out something so much deeper that was already in the icon. Does that make sense, right? Mm-hmm. So, because this other one here, it, this is kind of funny because this other one here is is I'm imagining the style even later than Rube Love, um, but they've tried to just bring it back to like the original, bring and put back in Abraham and Sarah. So it's kind of like a it's it's an interesting thing. Um, but it serves the point in showing that the boiling down brings out that something that is, it makes something explicit what was inferred in the other one by boiling it down, right? So in some, in some regards, that's a great example of how, um, you know, not that I'm by any means calling the slang, you know what I mean? But the concept of when something becomes simplified, it brings out a profound um, sometimes a, a really profound aspect of of what's like hidden underneath, uh, like in you know speaking in regards of language, whether it's visual or linguistic, you know. Yes, man, that's yeah, it's deep. Yeah, yeah, it's deep. This is see, this is gonna mess me up because now I'm gonna be sitting in front of that icon. Yeah, and going. Hmm. So, so go ahead, Andrew. Um, so that icon, the hospitality, Mm -hmm. I'm still, I gotta be honest, I'm still reeling a little bit. My mind is still like kind of working through a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, the icon, the hospitality of Abraham. So, this the story is, is that (sighs) I'm sorry. The story is that, uh, or the uh, how it goes, is that the three angels showed up. To Abraham and he was hospitable to them and it was the Trinity, correct? Right, Father? Yeah, it's like, um, a, it's like a theophany. Okay, what do you mean by that? It's like a um a revelation of God. Okay. You know, kind of like how um you know in the Lord's baptism, the the father, the voice of the father was heard thunder in the in the the spirit in the form of a dove came down, right? You have this 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 revelation, this appearance of of the Trinity of God, right? Um, so why is this? So from what I understand, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be obtuse. No, I've struggled with this for a little while. Why is this? Because I don't think you're supposed to depict the Father in an icon, and so I. Well, yeah. So there. so here's here's the thing about that. Um, this is another one of those things where, yes, like you don't depict the father in a canonical sense, quote unquote, because, you know, God is invisible. No man's seen the father, you know, and Christ is the image of the visible God. That's all true. However, I think that there's a couple of things behind that. Number one, um, in this case in particular, um, What's being represented here? This is this is the brilliance of this of this icon, right? This is why it's inspired because you have the Trinity represented, right? But it's not the Trinity as in like this. Yes, this represents the Father, but it's not the Father. Okay. Yes, this represents Christ, but it's not Christ. 
Okay. Yes, it represents what you, you, you see what I'm saying. So this is not like pre-incarnate Christ. I mean, it is, but it's not like how sometimes pre-incarnate Christ is depicted. Yeah, like the angel of the Lord. Yeah. Okay. So, so this, um, this kind of prefiguring or foreshadowing, right? This image points us to a reality that was revealed in the Old Testament. It brings forth that theological understanding that the fathers have, have had about it being a theophany, that the okay. appearance at the hospitality of Abraham was a, a theophany. It was, a, it was a, a foreshadowing into this, this appearance of God, right? Um, but that the again, angels, the angels are an echo then? They're in they're so it's like fractal. Am I getting that kind well, of? Well, well, I mean, in one sense, we can look at it that way. In another sense, yeah, angels are messengers. So even if you have a herald representing a king or representing, a, you know, I mean, it's like the angels being in the stead of the place, the persons of the Trinity in the sense of literally because the angels and those icons are there. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? The angels in the. Yes, in, okay. yes, yes. And because this is such a pivotal moment, because mm -hmm. this is like, this is the mo this is like the moment, like mm -hmm. this is this is a big pivotal moment that we would that all three persons of the Trinity would be present in this moment. And the thing to understand is this is also this is really pivotal because there's there's lots of reasons someone could say about why Abraham's the father of faith, but I would present to you two key reasons: number one, intercession; number two, hospitality okay okay and so his hospitality here also leads into his intercession right because he offered hospitality in such a way right this led the this opened up the door for that encounter in which you know he basically intercedes for sodom he intercedes for okay. Lot, you know and this is what i would submit to you where he is kind of tested and proved worthy or suitable, worthy is not the right word, suitable to become, you know, the kind of father of faith, the progenitor in which all the nations would be blessed, right? So, because that's what a Christian is. The, a Christian as a, as a, as a, a child of faith, a, a, a son of Abraham, there's two core things that Christians have to do. We have to be hospitable and we have to offer intercession. Like that's kind of like in the, in the job description, you know? I had never understood until you just said that, that the reason why he's able to intercede was because he had been hospitable. I had never made that connection, but it's like, it's obvious now that you say it, it's like, oh, that's why they were even willing to, to hear that. Mm -hmm. But because he had been hospitable, mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. So the hospitality is, so the hospitality is first. Yeah. Hospitality is first. It's key. It's key. But you know, mm. I mean, even even in this sense, um, you go you go into that account of Sodom, uh, of Lot being in Sodom when the angels come to him. I mean, in some in some degree, he's he's trying to demonstrate some hospitality as well. Uh, Lot is to uh, the angels there, you know. Um, and we can get into the whole thing. I know there's some people they'll make the comment they're like, well, that was just kind of the custom in the Near East, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, mm, like, yes, but we're, we're looking at that like retroactively. Uh, and I also think too, it's like, there's, a, there's those men in Sodom weren't being hospitable. <laughs> you know, the ones who are like, give me the mail, the, give me the, give me the visitors so we can rape them. You know, like that, they weren't being very hospitable. So I think there's enough evidence there. And even historically, like to say like, yeah, it's not a given, right? Not everyone was, not everyone universally was hospitable. In fact, that longstanding tradition in the Near East of hospitality, I think, if I'm not mistaken, most people point to Abraham for the beginning of that, you know, so. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Yeah. It's, and I mean, it. the other thing, as I said before, the other thing that I wanted to talk about with the right hand, and it seems appropriate for, for this week and some of the things going on is 
is this idea of because it's something that has been bothering me um this idea of this idea of sovereignty and who like who who are people answering to and who are people answering for i've heard a lot of people like banding about terms like patriotism and these sorts of things mm -hmm. i've heard people saying in supposedly orthodox countries saying glory to human beings without like glory to our country glory to our military glory mm -hmm. to the president glory to the this glory to the that and no glory to god yeah yeah i've i've heard a lot of that yeah. this week and it's been really really bothering me yeah. um yeah. i mean it's like if nothing else maybe we can approach approach it from uh, uh the perspective that hopefully people would expect from us but uh yeah, it, this whole thing's really disturbing, but not I, I, not necessarily for the obvious reasons of like looming world war and nuclear war. Like, it, it's disturbing because it's revealing another aspect of how far gone, um, not just like our country is, but like the um, I think I think what we're seeing is. And maybe it's always been there. I don't know, but we're, we're seeing a, a really um, it's almost like watching someone drunk. You know what I mean? It's watching someone just intoxicated, just kind of like steamrolling, picking up speed. And as they go along, it's like, I remember having nights like this where a friend would be just, you know, you'd be at that second bar, second place. It's like, uh, they're getting kind of messed up, you know, and as the night goes on, each encounter, whether it's going from another bar to another one or from a table to table, it's like it's picking up steam that's getting more chaotic, it's getting more frenzy, it's get you know what I'm saying? Um, it's and obviously, you know, the the lack of sobriety in that sense is from from alcohol, but this one, the intoxication is, is just from the the frenetic energy of just propaganda and 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 we're, and really a worldly mindset. I mean, the the lack of spirituality, the lack of a spiritual voice anywhere is like shocking, you know. Um, although it, it's also interesting to me too because uh, you know the the reality of how quickly. Um, certain players have thrown their hat in and it's going to be tough to go into this because I imagine no matter how not even neutral, but how much trying to really approach it to stay on the world path, you know, we're going to, I'm, I'm going to try to be, we're going to try to be someone maybe might just kind of not see it that way, but I gotta be honest. It's just interesting to me how certain players, they throw their hat in so hard on a certain side, it makes it real tough for me. It's a real temptation, you know? Expand um, on that. Like in the last few days, we've seen Klaus Schwab, uh, Marina Abramovich, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Throw their hats in like full force for like- Yeah, what, the Marina Abramovich thing was truly yeah. strange. Yeah, yeah. Why is Klaus Schwab throwing his hat in there? You know what I mean? Father May I ask a question? Yeah. Because this is my, this was my main takeaway right away is I don't understand the complexities of this. And I read up on this issue because like I tried to do like, I don't know, I get bogged down in details pretty hard and I don't have a brain that does very well with that kind of stuff. So sometimes I have to kind of hone my gut a little bit um, through prayer and like kind of trying to ask and not like, I don't, it's not reactionary. I'm not like, oh, I know what's going on here. Um, but I wanted to ask the role of um, one of these countries is schismatic. And like one of these countries is like, I didn't know what that might play into it. I would play it. Okay. Because that was my first instinct is I was like, what's once that? again, what is that? Once again, it's like Orthodox. Did you hear that, Father? Yeah. Do you oh, hear it? It's 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 echo somehow somehow andrew's got echo mute yourself and then unmute yourself my fault 
it's all good. It's not, it's, yeah, it's not your bad. Go ahead. That was very strange, <laughs> especially the timing of when you said it. And, it, and I was like, ooh, oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Hey, we wrestled so not against know, flesh and blood. <laughs> just so you guys know, I'm very happy and I have no ill will or wanting to commit suicide at all. Just so, yeah. we, you know, just so we make that clear right now. I have absolutely no desire. Same, to same, same. Same here. I. <laughs> this is wild because today I was just thinking this. I was like, at some point in time, I'm going to have to say on the podcast, like, I'm very happy. I'm not depressed or suicidal at all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now so, is the time. Now is that time. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, I, sorry. Continue. So I just, so, okay, I'll, I'll wrap up my spiel, but um that what was immediately struck me is I have to live my life under, I don't know what the truth is, but I know falsehood when I see it. And one of the first things that stuck out to me was like, again, you'd have to be pretty pay kind of close attention and kind of come from it from a certain context to get why it's really weird to suddenly be so incredibly anti-Russia and pro-Ukraine. Because one of these countries has, We've been dealing with it for the past couple of weeks, not me, but the church has been dealing with the fact that the Ukrainians are like, well, we're, you know, we're just going to elect our, from what I understand, we're just going to have our own like clergy and it, like, we don't yeah, have no, to. No, 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 Forgive me. That, that's Please part, correct me. That's Please. part of the problem is that it's not that because the actual legitimate Ukrainian church legitimate church, the canonical church headed by Metropolitan Onufri. This is, this is where it is actually complicated, right? Because the legitimate Orthodox, Ukrainian Orthodox church under Metropolitan Onufri, it, you know, has called for a ceasing of the war, obviously, you know? And it was like, please don't do this, whatever. But that's the legitimate church which has, which has been and is still in communion with, with the Russian church and the Serbian church and everyone else, right? But this other Ukrainian church, the one that's being um, basically backed and supported by Constantinople and then Alexandria and, and various others, they're, they're like schismatics. They're like, some of them have been like, uh, they're not even fully ordained or properly ordained or defrocked. It's, it's, it's a whole scandalous mess, right? And so that is all definitely a part of the problem, right? And even getting into, you know, um, US involvement in regards of Ukrainian quote unquote church business, that in itself, if that doesn't ring, ring a bell for everybody, I don't know what to tell you, you know? Um, well, wasn't that, isn't this also like the exact same pattern playing out in Montenegro with the Serbian church mm -hmm. that like the, the, that's been the Serbian church mm -hmm. in right. Montenegro. Right. And then all of a sudden there's this Montenegrin church, right? Like out of nowhere. Right. Right. And so these agitating forces, you know, metropolitan, excuse me, um, um, oh, Lord have mercy. Um, a blessed memory. Um, help me out. Oh, forgive me. Uh, Is there someone you want me to look up? Oh, I feel so bad. God forgive me. Um, he, he reposed say, right before Patriarch Irene did um, uh, not a leapy uh Oh, forgive me. You gotta stop thinking about it. Yeah, stop thinking about it. But he he was a real vocal um, critic and just said, you know, the Orthodox Church is um, the only thing standing in the way of the NWO. He was really, um, I mean, a new real, world order. Yeah, new world and, order. and people want to roll their eyes, whatever. But when you see the way in which. Let, let's break it down even more so for people who just can't handle that type of language. The Western powers, right? Um, or certain economic powers, the way that they have consistently gone and tried to undermine the church, in particular, the Orthodox Church, right? Um, 
and all in the and all the, the Eastern Bloc, the Balkans. I mean, you see a pattern that is really clear in which you can't just go after one one segment, right? Because in 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 the East, faith and and economics and just culture and government, it's so it, it's so enmeshed, right? And the influence of the church is so strong that oh, you, you have to, if you really want to upend and, and really undo, you have to really get rid of the, of the church. I mean, that's the communists understood that, you know, um, and these, these powers understand this as well, you know. Um, and the communists used the same tactic, right? Like oh, they, yeah. they just created a new church, basically. They would just mm -hmm. pop up a new weird schismatic church give it the name mm -hmm. right right so this whole situation that's happened with um ukraine is really it's so unfortunate but it's also like long-standing and, and i think that um for those of us who've already seen it you know i mean there's a great meme going around with like npcs and uh they have like the Biden Harris thing on the side of their head, and then like the BLM fist on the in the forehead, and then the next one down with masks. And now this one, you know, all NPCs, and then they have the Ukrainian flag on the side. It's like the the veracity in which people have just jumped in with everything. It's like it it's it's been so interesting. I had to get on Facebook just to see, and I don't get on Facebook for anything anymore. And just as I expected. People, it's just, in fact, I saw one, I saw one person who, I mean, this, this person, last time I checked on her, she was as far from the church as you could imagine. And, uh, you know, she's posting a picture of, you know, someone having quote unquote underground liturgy in Ukraine, you know, pray for Ukraine all stuff. I'm just like, this is insane. Like the, and this is another thing that I find so interesting. It's like, so much now everything's so it's so binary this is what's problematic it's so problematic but it's like you can tell it's like down the line you can you can you know what side someone's going to be on it's like you know generally speaking people are going to be like all in on the ukraine thing or they've also been super wokey they've been super covid -y. yes yep. yes yes yep. yes yep you know what i mean and and it's 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 even in regards of like you know there's a certain very large the largest jurisdiction <laughs> orthodox churches in America, you know they're they're getting all in throwing their hats in with the pronouns throwing their hats in with all the stuff and they're the ones who started this they're the ones who are really fostering all this uh, problem with Ukraine, um, getting all the way into the continent of Africa it's it's problematic. Um, so in regards of, I mean, that's a whole thing we could talk about too. Um, but it, it's it's just funny to me, the hypocrisy, how it's just, it's so, it comes out so quickly because in my mind, I'm like, these, most of these people who are just like, yeah, Ukraine, Russia is this, this bad bully, whatever. Um, these are also the same people that thought every single cop, every single straight white man was a Nazi and a racist, right? Yeah. But I'm like, there's actual Nazis in Ukraine, though. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, Ukraine has been this crazy hotbed for neo-Nazi action for years. Years. Like, not a couple. I'm talking like 20, 30,000 plus gatherings for years, right? And perhaps um, might those be a little bit supported by America? Sure. But... But the point being is, is, you know, it's just funny how these people who, when it was in vogue, whatever, two years ago for BLM, they're throwing their hat in for Ukraine. I'm like, I don't think you really understand what you're throwing your hat in for, because that schismatic Ukrainian church, they're like, I've seen some really disturbing images in some of those churches. They're, you know, if you, people want to talk about like a nationalist, like, quote unquote Nazi racist church. I'm like, that's that's what that is. So the the <laughs> the hypocrisy and the contradiction, at the very least the inconsistency, it's not lost on me that um, these unfortunate souls who are just programmed to just kind of swallow in 
whatever the machine's pumping out to them, they can't even, they don't even have the means to discern real, obvious, simple fact finding anymore. Because we can go on right now and you can just type in, I mean, I remember this directly. Like there, there was a 2019, I think it was called, what's it called? The Nation or whatever. It's like to the full on expose, no problem, whatever. There's been multiple of them. Um, Vice has done plenty of them. I mean, like up until the Ukraine incident, right? It was like kind Neo-Nazis of- Neo-Nazis like, in the far right. Yep. Neo-Nazis in the far right are on the march in Ukraine, the nation. Yep, yep. yep. After, five years after the Maidan uprising, anti-Semitism and fascist inflected, oops, fascist inflected ultra-nationalism are rampant yep. by Lev Golinkin, who I'm assuming is probably Jewish. Yep. Yep. 2019. Here you go. Yep. My 2019. Dawn. You scroll down in there, you'll see stuff about, I mean, Ukraine's notorious for being corrupt anyways, but they'll have like all this crazy stuff. I mean, they have one of their parliamentary um, parties is kind of the equivalent of like what the um, Greece had in regards to the Golden Dawn. You know, there really you go. Trying- Speaker of Parliament co-founded and led two neo-nazi organizations the speaker of parliament yeah yeah so so all these people who are just like all of them you know all of you who are just losing your minds over ukraine like i don't really think you understand what you're talking about i think that you're 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 getting a a different because this gets us into the whole thing like kiev is the spiritual burst birthplace of the Rus people that's where it all yes. started off like and so you know I, I saw this thing it's just so funny again you know people just they don't understand this like Ukrainian Protestant pastor I saw this thing whatever and he's like he quoted Proverbs don't remove the ancient landmarks you know trying to give some sort of weird reference to Russia coming in it's just like you fool <laughs> like uh the ancient landmark is it all was Rus like, mm-hmm. like it's Ukraine in the same way all the other nation states of the 20th and, and, and 19th century are falsely created. Mm-hmm. They just, you know, the powers that be drew lines seemingly, it's not arbitrary, but seemingly arbitrarily, right? And divided them up. I mean, it, and, this is, and this is the fruit of it. The same thing in Yugoslavia. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a repeated pattern not just in regards of the total disregard for the actual landmarks, if we're gonna quote the scripture properly, right? But also just, it's a total disregard in regards of spiritually understanding um, that that's what binds peoples, right? And so um, what's happening in Ukraine, no one's talking about that. Everyone's starting to talk about all these other things, right? And that's all there, right? Ukraine is the shield and the and the and the spear for NATO and Western powers. Sure, okay. No one wants to talk about all of the warnings. And, I, and believe me, I'm, it, it may seem like it for a lot of people. That's fine. I'm not saying that Putin is some sort of angel or whatever. He's he's a government. He's the head of a government. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't. <laughs> I don't get upset for someone for, for being, I don't get mad at a shark for being a shark. You, you know what right. I mean? It's like dogs bark, cats meow. It's when the shark tries to act like he's a sheep or something else. That's when there's a problem, mm. right? And from my perspective, Putin is just just doing actually what he's what he should be doing. And again, I'm not saying like, oh, he's faultless, he's perfect. He's saying, it's not what I'm saying at all. But like, what we have to look at is the spiritual un, spiritual reality undergirding all this first, right? Mm-hmm. And it isn't just about like, because we have to understand when, when we hear these things about democracy and, and all this stuff, it's like, is that really what's being promoted and, and given to Ukraine through the Western powers of NATO? I don't think so. No. I don't think so. No. Um, you know what it is i mean it's not it's not even being promoted and given to the people in the countries of those western powers no the american citizens the german citizens look at look at look at the last two years i mean where was democracy executive order after executive order after executive order. i'm sure at least one of you guys saw that really wonderful tweet 
with Trudeau condemning Russia mm-hmm. for, for mm-hmm. coming against democracy and authoritarianism. It was like, it. it's wild, man. It, it's one of those moments where it's just like, I sometimes I have to stay away from the news. This is my cycle. Every once in a while, I go like, okay, things are so bad. I have to at least get on there. <laughs> you know, every once, I have sure. to at least check with things. And when I do, it just feels like I have about 15 minutes before my head's going to pop like a, like a grape. Yeah. And I, I got to get out because not because I'm so mad, not because I'm like, oh, Wokies or anything like that. It's, it has nothing to do with that, actually. It's the level of just double speak and lying. Like that's what that's, that's that's been the issue for me. It's the that's lying that's me. happening. Like, yes. I mean, yes. just it, it's. I, I hate to use this term because I almost think the proliferation of this term in itself is like, you know, problematic. But you feel like you're getting gaslighted. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, am I crazy? Like, like this is clearly hypocritical this is clearly inconsistent all that stuff right i mean i mean at work today at my super wokey christian uh work they're all like sending out prayers like prayers emails of like prayers for ukraine and stuff like that and like i got to this point and i literally had to oh i can't remember who says it i'm sure there's one specific father that says it i can't remember who that i'm sure it said a lot in the church but bite your tongue Mm -hmm. because then your anger will go away like Mm -hmm. choke it out Mm -hmm. like because like don't give it oxygen Mm -hmm. like just sit there and i was sitting in a meeting and all these people that were like oh russia 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 and i was just like you guys are literally like demonizing like the largest christian country and like mm-hmm. all of the world, like you guys don't even understand. Like I could ask you right now, is Russia a Christian country? And they'd be like, oh, I, I don't really know. You know, that's not what's really important. And it's like, I think it is really, really important. And I think like Putin, yeah, to get to go back for just one second, like Putin's like just another in a long line of Slavic leaders who are probably not great people, but like, I can think particularly of one particular czar that we all know who is not a particularly great person and made some very big mistakes, but was used by God and definitely is uh, venerated as a saint now, him and his entire family. And, you know, like, it doesn't mean that. And it's like, it takes a God mind to really see like the larger picture of all of this stuff of like, sure. and and, and I'm so sorry, Father. One last thing I wanted to say is it's like it's Balkan adjacent because it's not the Balkans, but it's Balkan adjacent politics. It will never make sense to Americans. It will never, ever make sense to Americans. And it's like, that's the point is if you think that like, if you look at the breakup of Yugoslavia and the insanity, what we think of as insanity that happened here, but like, it just doesn't make any sense to us. But like that craziness or quote unquote craziness like spreads outward and it's it's cultural and it, it goes outward. And so like to have these people, because I just don't know if we have anything to relate it to. It would be like if we were arguing with, I guess, Russia about Alaska, you know, like like if we were constantly like saying, no, Alaska is ours and Russia's like, well, we got it first and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like we have, as Americans, as Westerns, especially Americans, we don't have much to compare it to. And so, I mean, that's what I really wanted to tell people. My work is like, you have no idea. You just have no idea what's really going on here. You're reading a headline and you're assuming that Putin is what the Hitler of, you know, Eastern Europe. And there's been a couple Hitlers of Eastern Europe already. And Putin's not one of them. And it's like, or maybe he is. I, I mean, I don't really know. And to, to, to somehow like try and like extrapolate from that information, it's like our country is 200 years old. This is land that is soaked with like the blood of the martyrs of like soldiers fighting like against like the Turkish. Anyway, I'm going, I'm rambling. I think, I think you might actually, whoa, you might actually be giving them too much credit, honestly. Like, and, and this has been Ooh. my big, 
the, the people that you're talking to, like the Americans that you're talking to, I think you're giving them too much credit because like you at least have some background. It's not even that they're ignoring the background. This has been the thing that's gotten me, right? Having been on reality TV, having produced reality content, like when this started, I was like, I am, and never mind, the president of Ukraine is a television producer <laughs> who produced a long running show called Servant of the People where he played the president of Ukraine and based upon him making that show, then he became the president of Ukraine. Yes, that's Zelensky's background. He, bef before he was president, he had produced a TV show called Servant of the People that was incredibly popular in Ukraine for himself where he played the president of Ukraine. <laughs> right? And then they elected him president. And see, I didn't even know that, but when having been on reality TV, when I started watching what was happening, what upset me about that was, I was like, oh, they're making a reality show right now. That this is this is the part that is the most truly frightening to me, because before I remember having a conversation, I don't I don't recall who it was with, but I was I lived in Vegas. I'd been on it was like maybe fifth or sixth season of the show. We we're talking about the presidential election. And I said to them, give me 15 million dollars, a slot on primetime TV, and I will give you your next president of the United States. I remember cynically saying this to somebody, right? I produced a couple of reality things at that point. I had it down. And then lo and behold, Trump announces. And now mind you, a lot of the reason that he got elected was because people got confused who Trump was because of The Apprentice. Right. They saw him on The Apprentice. Right. Even, even look at the promo pictures of The Apprentice. It's him at a giant desk sitting, looking very leader-like. They got in their mind that this character that was completely an invented, you're fired. This is all invented, right? This is invented. But people confuse that. Like in their mind, they confuse the reality of this man with this thing that they saw portrayed. And that's what's happening that's yeah. the scariest thing for me right I, now. I just want to I want to say just a one little one little point because it's just one interview it doesn't mean much that lose you guys sure. um but it, it's real telling if you guys have ever seen it there's that one interview uh of Donald Trump on Oprah from like the 80s if you've ever seen it I think I know the one you're talking about and um, he he talks on there about like, yeah, you know, she's like, would you ever run for president? He's like, yeah, I might, you know, whatever. Um, but that's not to me what's amazing. That's a kind of whatever question. It's what you're saying right there, Cyprian, is just so true. When you watch that video and then all the other stuff. I mean, I remember Donald Trump, like, you know, in the 80s, whatever. The Donald Trump that's been from The Apprentice onward, the Donald Trump that's been on World Wrestling Federation, like all that, that's not the Donald Trump from like the 80s. And like, it's yeah, different. I guess people change whatever, but I'm like, mm. It's a fabricated character, Andrew. Like Donald Trump was sure. a character on W, like W, I think it was WWF at the time. Donald Trump wrestled in the yeah. World Wrestling Federation, sure. right? He was like, it's, it's a character, like all of this is a character. And that's the part that is like the most scary to me because these people who are prayers for Ukraine, putting a Ukraine flag, doing all of this, it's not even Ukraine. It's the, rea it's the Ukraine show, Yeah. right? It's, yeah. Like, it's like American Idol and this is their favorite person contestant on American Idol and they want them to, like, it's totally... Like, I guess this is what you call hyper reality, but it's like, they're not, they don't know or care anything about Ukraine and Russia because the things in the reality show that's being produced right now is not Ukraine or Russia. It's got elements, right? Just like a reality show, like the character that I portrayed on TV and the things that were happening, it's like, yes, I'm really at this bar. Yes, I'm really having drinks. Yes, it's not scripted that I'm reading off of a script, but that isn't to say that we weren't told by the producers, okay, you guys talk about blah, go. And then they filmed us, right? And this is what people have to understand is that it's like the set, the set is set. What happens inside there is not scripted where somebody goes, okay, go stand over here on your mark, say these words, cut, we retake it. No, 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 no. It's not like that. 
which is why you're seeing pictures of guys and they're like, oh yeah, they're arming the civilians. And it's like, it's a cardboard gun. Like there's that. been all these pictures. You've seen the pictures of the guy, they've got cardboard guns. And it's like-, like the, I saw one for the clip of the gun just like falls fell out. out. Father, the same guy, the same guy where it falls out. I've been calling him Sergey. And I've been doing this thing where I'm like, cut, Sergey, you're messing up. Cause it's the same guy. And then a Fox News clip where it says, you see in that one, he was in military outfit behind yeah. the former president. Next, he's in civilian gear. The headline is civilians take up arms and he's holding a cardboard gun on Fox News. It's, a, it's Fox News running. And I'm like, see, that's the part that's, that's, the part that's truly frightening to yeah. me. What's truly frightening is, oh, it's a TV show. And all of these people are doing real things in real life. Like we were talking about beforehand, like off a TV show, now Namecheap, this domain name uh, service is saying, well, if you're registered in Russia to support the Ukrainians in their, in their fight, we're not, we're going to remove, you've got six days to get your domains off or they stop working. And it's like, hold on, it's a TV show. Right. It's a TV show. Like, what are you doing? Right. My my wife was talking about her friends. She, of course, she's been talking to her friends, her family, everything. But it's like there's real world consequences for you not understanding that it's a TV show. Like she was talking about one of her girlfriends got like what one of her clients like canceled on her. Another one, her like hair person like said, "Well, we can't, you can't come to your appointment because you're Russian." Right? This is like in LA. Insane. Right? And it's like. It's a TV show. Insane. It's not real. They've got cardboard guns. It's the same guy in both clips. Like, it's fake. It's a TV show that's being put on, except they just put it onto the news. And you're I, taking real world actions. It's, that's the part that, that's the part to me where I'm like, how do you come back from that? Well, here's, here's the thing. Forgive me for being cynical, but... I mean, we don't because we've been there, I think, a lot longer than we want to acknowledge or can acknowledge, perhaps. I mean, I was sharing with you guys, I mean, like, I had no idea. And then I get grafted into them. And then I understand. I'm like, oh, and I was over there. I was I was in San Diego. I was in Kosovo. Yeah. Uh, what I what I thought what I, what most people thought in regards of the bombings that happened in '99 and everything like that. No, none none of that what that was put forward was was correct. None of that that was put forward was actual, and it's the same thing with with any of it. I mean, it's like after 9/11 when it showed footage of just random Middle Eastern people celebrating, yeah. Yeah. and it's like that could be for anything. That could be that could be Pasca. Like they could literally be like, they could literally be doing like a Christian procession. You have no of, idea. Like, they're celebrating supposedly the. And and I think I think this is this is the thing too. It's like, uh, you know, it's very easy to get to get caught up in the thing, you know, um, which, you know, is human. I, I I have to leave room to give people an opportunity to go like, yeah, okay, I was wrong. But that's again the problem, which brings us all the way back to, I think the way this culture has been moved in regards of, especially forgive me, but like it isn't just about the the liberal tendency because the right does it as well, but the doubling down, just the doubling down, the inability to be like, okay, sure, hold up. seen let that, me, seen a lot of that. Let me just slow down real quick. Like what? Like what's what is this? You know. Um, because Father, I have to say, this has been, for me, this has been one of the most transformative aspects of becoming Orthodox for me, is that my instinct to double down, I immediately get like a, where before it was just like, oh, the, when I would double down, it was just like rea almost reactive, like, oh, I'm just going to do it. Now there's this wall that I have to go past where it's like oh, oh oh you know what you're about to do right now you know you're not supposed to do that like you know that you're supposed to step back and have some humility on this like maybe you were wrong maybe you need to think about this mm -hmm. that little voice had never existed in my life 
before orthodoxy. Um, and now it's there. Doubling down and being wrong. Sorry, gentlemen, I see the face now. I see it. Like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's been pointed it. out to me. Yeah, I see it now. So I was wrong. It's okay. I mean, we can we can say like I can see the face of the picture. It's like someone had to draw a little smiley face on it to see where the eyes and the mouth are in the picture. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to send it to me. Yeah, I'll send it to you. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll I'll send it to you, Cyprian. But like, I see it now. Doesn't mean I still think it's a. I still think it's a both and situation. It's a both I think and. it is too. I think it is a both and situation too. Um. But like, I, I'm not going to discount it entirely because I think that uh, the people who were seeing it were the people who, I don't know how to say that, maybe were more engaged with uh, like fantasy art and fantasy storytelling. Cause I had like a pretty good little, like, I'll give, maybe not, I don't know. I'm still thinking about this live, but like the people we were showing it to immediately, one dude, like a couple of people were skeptical. No, that falls apart pretty quickly. Never mind. That doesn't let me, make let me tell really you, let me tell you something to keep in, uh, to keep in mind, Andrew. Let me tell you something to keep in mind. I remember one time, one time, uh, and this was something that supposedly never happened, but one of the editors of the show that I was on, maybe this is like five seasons in, became friends. He was an executive producer as well. So he was on the editing side. Maybe it was the last season. I remember he said, hey, hey, are you in LA? Come by. I want to show you the studio where all the editors are. Like, drop by. Everybody would love to see you if you're in LA. I was like, dude, I'm here. Like, I'm here now. I'll, I'll come by. We'll have lunch, whatever. So he brought me back into his editing bay, right? Because he was the main, like, main person. And I remember he sat me down. And he was like, okay. Like, he had, like, 10 screens and he had the whole timeline up like he was editing an episode and you could see each one of the cuts right every single one and there was like thousands of them up there and he said think about this he said every single one of those lines that you see is a decision like every single one of those lines is a decision that someone made now here's where how, here's how this where this ties in and i think it's a both and scenario because what we're leaving out is Someone chose that image. Mm. Mm. And whoever chose that image knew it was totally weird. Because mm -hmm. there's no way that you could look at it and not see it as being totally weird. Somebody chose that particular image mm -hmm. to be the one that they would use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Understand that. It's a, mm -hmm. Every single one of those cuts is a decision that's made by a professional. Mm -hmm. That's the person who makes those decisions for NBC Nightly News. That's not a schlub. That's not a mistake. Every single thing that you see on that broadcast is on purpose. Pretty wild, man. Pretty wild. And with that, you can go in a lot of different places because one of the things that I've been really aware of too, getting back to this, this thing of sovereignty, let's take it outside just the realm of like a sovereign nation. Let's take it into the realm of an expert. Let's take it into the realm of someone who has been tasked or is being paid to, to execute on something. And I've been thinking about this a little bit lately too, is that, you know, governance and, and understanding too that we, it's not like, oh, these, this idea of the principalities and the powers, it only applies to states, you know, heads of state. No, I mean, it, it can apply to any, any realm of like actual influence, right? And, and, and so far as, I mean, if you think about it this way, someone who is, um, it's not like uh, the guy who, who is chief editor for, you know, whatever, um, chief editor for, you know, for that, that segment of like, it's like these people who's, skill sets whose decisions matter everyone's on a team man you know bob dylan you got to serve somebody everybody's everybody's on a team and, and i think this is one of those things where i mean early on you know um we all had a, a friend you know a member of the community who's no longer with us and one of the big reasons why he just you know just was really struggling with a lot of people is just like, oh, you know, the thing with conspiracy theory is that it always, um, um, 
you know, it, it's trying to kind of account for things that are unaccountable, you know. And I, that's not, that's not what it is. That's, first of all, I mean, there's this great clip from Father Peter here talking about conspiracy, which is all over the scripture. They, they could, the Jews conspired against Christ, conspired against Paul. I mean, conspiracy is like the name of the game in that sense. But that, and, and that sentiment is like, no, that's not it for me. What it is, is it's, it's realizing, and once you get into it, you can see it, that it's not like, oh, powers and influence, spiritual influence only works for, like I said, you know, high levels of state. It's the same hand moving the pawn and moving the bishop. It's the same hand moving the pawn and moving the rook, you know? And I think this is really important to understand is that one of the things that we're seeing unfold is not so much just like, cause nothing, nothing is as black and white. It's not like black hats, white hats per se, but there is a real growing gap between what is, I hate to say it, you know, we'll have, maybe we can back it now, but the sovereignty of this king of this earthly kingdom, which is run by evil, you know, the, the devil is the God of this world and the kingdom of God, which is um, hidden and to, to those who are of the world and the kingdom of God, which is, you know, I, I hate to go there, but I'm going to say it to me in, in many ways. And I hate to say it just because I don't want to be polarizing in the wrong way. But, um, you know, this whole thing going down with, with, with uh, Russia and Ukraine, it's really a, just one more kind of like the, the symbol. Everything's on this trajectory. Everything is falling down these lines, um, at least in the West. You know what I mean? And you're seeing, you're seeing these... Um, these lines being drawn on everything and on things that you wouldn't even think mattered. You know what I mean? Um, who would have thought that you would have seen something so, I mean, who would have ever thought you'd see something like this happen where people were just so quickly inflamed and, and but here we are. And I, I think it's really important to recognize that there. I'm just gonna leave it with that. The same hand is moving the pawn and the, and the rook. The same hand is moving the pawn and the, and, the, and the bishop, you know? The kingdom of God being hidden is an interesting, it's an interesting notion. It's an interesting notion because it's- it Oh, feels forgive so, me, Cyprian, forgive me. Go ahead. Because this is the point. Yeah. I got a little lost. This is my point. Please. Everyone's like, oh, Russia's this aggressor and this terrible bully. But the thing is, is like, people are going to say the same thing about the three of us and trying to raise our children or, you know what I mean? Or just be husbands or be in this climate, in this environment, right? I'm going I'm to tell you a story. <laughs> I'm going to try to tell the story so I don't give away anyone's identity, but I have a uh, I have some spiritual children who I love very much. Um, and, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to, you know, they're, yeah, they're, they're trying to, um, they're having to engage with social workers. Let's just put it this way. They have, they're trying to do a good work, right? In order to do this good work, this, this, this blessed thing they want to do, they have to engage with social workers. Okay. That's, that's a good way to put it. And, um, so they have this profile and in this profile that the social worker had to see, um, the wife is just, you know, it's a normal picture. The wife is looking at the husband, right? Normal. And this, so the social worker was like, oh, you shouldn't do this because a picture of you looking up at your husband like that can give an impression of your, you know, being submissive to the husband and, you know, it could give off the sense of like, this is a dominant relationship. It's just it's twisted, right? It's, it's twisted. And, and I, I, I had to bring that up because this in many ways is what's happened on a larger scale, I think, with, with the Russian situation, right? Again, there's a whole thing in regards of the repeated refusals of like, 
you know, please NATO don't do this, please don't do that, you know, and it's just been not answered, not answered, not answered. And, you know, again, the hypocrisy of the same people who are, you know, burning American flags and, you know, doing this and that, they're like, you can't trust the government, this and that. Now, all of a sudden, they want to wave American flags and say, like, let's go kick Russia's, you know, behind. Like, Well, what? they want to re- wave the flags of another country and say that. They want so, to wave Ukrainian flag. Yeah, they want, yeah, they want to wave a Ukrainian flag. So, so what I'm, what I'm getting at with that is, like, it's just interesting to me because the one that everyone wants to demonize, just me as, as, a, as a man and as a priest and everything, looking back, I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of like on a micro scale, someone would probably want to demonize me for wanting to protect my fam. Or for me saying like, hey, you know what? This is a boundary right here. Like, I, like I've already gotten hate as a priest because I've been like, no, um, I'm putting boundaries up. There was this idea that because I'm a priest, no boundaries, anything can go. And I'm like, oh, no, no, this behavior is abusive. No, 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 you're just being a chauvinist. No, 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 you're misogynist. I'm like, no, I'm not. This behavior by this female is abusive and I'm not going to let people be abused anymore, right? But because people have a twisted sense of quote unquote Christianity, oh, no, 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 you're this, which I'm a bad priest, but not for those reasons. You know what I mean? That twisting, that's the thing that you're saying things that scare you in regards like the TV show, you know? This is what scares me is I just like, it's so, they truly, what is good is evil and what is evil is good now, you know? Well, that's the, that's the lack of orientation, right? So it's like, I think that, I think that they're the, I don't know if you guys can, they're, they're doing crazy things in my background here, but it's, I think that it's the same thing because the, the whole, like, first you're all of a sudden there's nothing. And like you say, all of a sudden, everybody's inflamed by this reality show that's going on. Right. And it's like, it's, and it's actually almost expected. Like people are like, well, you should be inflamed by this reality show. And if you're not, there's something wrong with you. And it's, it seems to me it's because there is no anchor or there, or maybe there is an anchor. And what we're seeing is actually the anchor of the prince of this world, mm-hmm. like the ruler of this world. That's exactly that chaos, mm-hmm. that chaotic reality of like, oh, I'm here. Oh no, I'm there. Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm over here now. Oh, I've got to go over there do this now and do this now. And there's not this like steady day in, day out. I mean, Christ is king. Watching the world is like having that friend that's like every time you run into them, like, oh, I'm really into making hats now. And then like you see them like a week later, it's like, oh, no, the hats. No, I'm doing this. Now I'm doing this juice cleanse. And then it's like the next time after that, it's like, hey, I'm getting really into like basket weaving. Like basket weaving is really, really cool. And every time you see them, it's like some new thing that is like their- Artisanal truth. cheeses. Oh, then yeah. They're, then they're doing cider at home. Oh, no, I'm doing some, my own ciders now. <laughs> and it's all like Instagram ready, all like very fun, like cutesy, like niche little hobbies or whatever. So it's just, it's it's madness. So then I have to say something really quick. Father- um, I'm sorry, not Father Cyprian. You you said earlier that I gave too much credit to people. Was that in reference to that? I'm saying like I'm saying you're not informed on the issues, and you're saying there are no issues. This is all a made up reality TV. Correct. Show. Okay. Correct. Right. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's not even like they. It's not even like oh, here's the issues. They either ignored the issues because what are the things that they could do, right? Like, here's the issues. And you're like, yo, you, you're ignoring the issues or you looked at the issues and you just you've gotten them completely wrong. It's, I'm, what I'm saying is it's none of that. OK, like it's they haven't ignored anything. They've paid close attention. But what they've been playing, paying close attention to is a reality TV show. Sure. And I can see that. I can see that. I can yes, see that. they're arguing with you about the rea- a reality TV show. I what, think what is, is has Father frozen? No, he's no, just he's there. Jeffy chuckling to himself. He's having a good old time over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, dude, that was just been wild. It's, it's, it's been so good. <laughs> this has been this this recording so far has been a real roller coaster for me like 
When I saw that picture the first time, my all my glands like opened up and just a <laughs> bunch of chemicals just got released into my body. And I was sitting there like, okay, all right, okay. <laughs> and then I was like, and then I had, it's like this whole, like it's the royal path of being like way up here and then being brought down low and then kind of like finding like this middle ground of being like, oh, okay, yeah, this, this is starting to feel okay. All right. Like this is kind of starting to pass the smell test a little bit of being yeah. like, okay, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, I hear I am getting inflamed just like everybody else. I mean, like not necessarily in the same way, but you know, um, that's like, I'm one of those guys that always kind of falls at first until I brought back to my senses, but the help of my brothers with like, for like a deep fake or something like that. Of like when it's supposed to like that, the Pope disappeared when he like turned around or whatever and he walked yeah, away and yeah. disappeared. I was like, Pope's a hologram. It's been a hologram for years. Did they prove and that one? What happened with that? I don't remember. It was, it, and it like, and the thing is, is like my whole stance has always been like, I'm willing to entertain this. Like, are you? Right. And then they're like, well, no, I'm not willing to entertain. I'm like, so you've got reality figured out, huh? Tell me what that's like. Tell me you've got everything figured out already. Like, and at this point, I'm now talking to somebody who's like believing like the mainstream narrative and stuff like that. It's like, so you've got everything figured out. Please tell me how comforting that is to me. Because like, again, I can't come at it from this perspective of like, there are some things I can obviously say, yeah. no, that's true. That's false. I, mean, I know one of the things that's that's really key for me is, uh, you know, I I worship I worship the dead God who's who who's who is now alive. You know what I mean? I worship. Sure. The one, uh, he was a Jewish teacher who was hung on a cross. I mean, it's just you know what I'm saying. Like the whole basis of of what we have given ourselves over to if you're looking at it from that perspective is just absurd right and i and i think that's the thing is and that's that's part of the reason why 2020 and the dim age and even now what we're facing with everything is like so so great and so awesome is that like yeah if you're gonna do it you just gotta do it you just gotta realize that you know kind of like what you're saying andrew like you don't have reality figured out. So trust the map that was given. Yeah. And, you know, the map that was given is like, there's this world is not what you think it is, you know? So that's the big, that's the big takeaway. That's the big takeaway that the world is not what you think it is. And I think to start at that place. And, and I, I think that's, I think that's it father. Like, cause that's, that's the that's the second piece right like the reality tv show aspect of it and people following the reality show wouldn't be so bad if they were following it as entertainment mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. if it was like oh yeah I'm, it's it's entertainment or if they recognize that i'm following this and it's got my attention but i know that there's more going on than i could see mm -hmm. even that would be like sober a good right because I'm sorry, what's that no 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 separate finish i'm going to debrief yeah. us finish us separate finish yes the the but that's i think that's the issue is that it's like not only are they on the reality show but they are so it's the secularization that has taken the mystery out of the world for them mm -hmm. so what they see is like oh here's secular me i'm watching my secular screen there's secular things going on i'm being told all of these things that have no spiritual content whatsoever. There's no spiritual undertone. There's nothing emotional or any of these things. I'm being given just the facts and the facts are either true or they're not. Like the Pope is either a hologram or he's not. And it's like, no, it's not that. Because the Pope could sometimes, that picture could be the Pope is a hologram. Like, or it couldn't, again, it's a decision that's been made. Maybe somebody is trying to get you to think the Pope is a hologram. Like there's more going on. Mm -hmm. right or or maybe there's who knows what other things are interacting like you just don't know but it's like that like i really appreciate the fact that there is mysticism in my life mm -hmm. and like and that real christianity has brought 
mysticism into my life on a daily basis and like that I interact with it, that it's there. And I'm like, okay, yes. And the world, there's mysteries in this world because I can absolutely see how disorienting and, and how much of a lack of an anchor somebody who doesn't have that, of course you have to jump from thing to thing because it's like, what's being presented to me? What, what new show? Cause if I don't have sure. that, where do I go? Right. What can I believe? I don't believe anything. Right. Right. And that, that aspect of being just the kind of postmodernist madness is just being spoon fed to everyone. There's nothing is solid. You can't know anything. And so since you can't know anything, there's no surety then you, I mean, you're just primed to be, to be moved and to be, you know, conditioned, I, I'm assuming because um, the veracity in which everyone snaps into place, whether it's Ukraine, whether it's masks, you know, vaccines, whatever it is, uh, the veracity, not even just the, the speed, right? Cause the speed, okay, I'll give you that because of the because of the the medium in which we see things. Okay, technology, right? The speed makes sense. The veracity. That's that's the thing where I go like, man. They want it so bad. They want it so bad. They, they yeah. buy into it so hard. That's it's what like, makes you like, yes. yeah, that's I don't know. It's gotta be some kind of dopamine or like serotonin dump or something in their brain when like they're like, oh thank thank goodness someone is telling me what to think and i get it i've been there like it's not like i'm i'm even trying to you know careful i don't remember the exactly the line is from fahrenheit 451 but careful montag you were them like two weeks ago mm -hmm. like i have to remember that so i can't even be like oh those sheeple you know like but it's also like at the same time like the 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 bias lies in the in, in the person because i see that stuff and as soon as like I was like, I don't know how to feel about this. I don't know how to feel about this. And as soon as like the wokey people were like pro Ukraine, like, okay, I know how to feel about this now. Like, <laughs> okay, like, yeah, I'm jumping off. Like, I, I don't know what's going on here. And like, I have to remember that Ukraine's been like, you know, this little like thing going on for a while. And that's, that's also the insanity of the whole thing is because it's just like, you want to take this microcosm, this chapter in this novel and highlight this chapter and be like, this is what's important. It's like, you there's 40 chapters before this you have to read like this is part of this whole you know tv show or not you know like you're jumping into the eighth season of whatever show 24 I don't, I don't even know if that did eight seasons and then you're suddenly making all these decisions based on things it's like no 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 this is a whole narrative arc like there's a whole star wars arc. started with episode four yeah. star wars started yeah. with episode well, four yeah, you buddy can you can throw... start the story anywhere you can you can throw people in media res yeah without a mm -hmm. doubt but it's like it's also like if you had released all the other movies and then threw people into like the last jedi and you're like oh by the way there's all this other stuff you could look at if you wanted to but you know speaking of which uh speaking of Star Wars, uh you know uh jedda the city that they're in in rogue one was supposed to be based off of sarajevo Oh really? Uh, yeah. So, and it kind of makes sense the next time you, if you guys ever watch that movie again, fantastic mm -hmm. movie. But if you ever watch it again, well, I think it's, right. I think it's maybe my favorite Star Wars movie. The fantastic Robot. movie. No, it's, a, it's a really. I think it. That's this. I'm not going to talk about this. Like the fantastic. It's an absolutely great movie. It's like up in my top four or five favorites. I just recently rewatched it. I was like. Oh boy, this good. is a really, really good movie. Um, but uh, so uh, my my good good buddy is trying to convince me right now, and I'm not too far away from believing. He's like, "Oh, all major league sports are staged." He's like, "Oh, they're all staged. It's all to sell ad time. It's all to sell like it's like um, they'll like prolong, like they'll prolong plays." And he's I don't know. He I'll I'll have to put him in like maybe we can bring him on or something like that. But he's like talking about it and I was like, it's all to sell like ad time and it's all to like, I don't know, it's like to increase these certain things. And he's like, it's so weird that this one team lost at this certain time because then that like, I don't know, it like creates this whole other opportunity. He's breaking it down for me and I wasn't paying as close attention 
that's what I was going to say. That was going to derail the conversation because I have no real follow up, but it's certainly interesting. And I, that's the point I'm at where I'm like, maybe could be, it really could be. I have no idea. And it's like, okay, well, how would you do that? And then you're like, you could do that. It's really hard to think of that if only human powers were involved, but it's like, I know, I know. I keep wait, 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 what is this? Because we've got the we've got now now we're be, now we've got demons Im- imitating our voices on every time that we jump in. I think it's on Andrew's uh, on Andrew's end. I think we're getting some sort of feedback. I hope you're not hearing. I hope you're not hearing the demon voice. Well, you wouldn't hear the demon voices. You'll hear them on the playback. Oh, You'll hear them right. on the playback. Yeah, Tom Brady's <laughs> wife. She's a witch. Yes, G- Giselle. Yeah, yeah. Giselle. I had, I had just listened to a podcast where. Um, uh, uh, a, a spiritual priest monk cosmos was talking about what it looks like when someone is being used magic against like when they're being uh, like and then I wa- I didn't watch it I heard and saw highlights of the Kansas City versus Buccaneers Super Bowl and it looks like people just tripping over random stuff just like not performing well um, and then like I was like huh, I think my wife said something about Tom Brady's wife was a witch. And I like, it's like one of those parts from the show Arrested Development where he's like trying to figure out this mystery and he turns around and asks the guys like, hey, did you burn down, you know, the banana stand or did you burn down the storage unit? He's almost definitely. It's like, you just Google it. And she's, oh yeah, right there. Oh yeah, I'm a witch, 100%. I do magic to help Tom every single time he plays. And it's like, oh, well, yeah, there you go. I mean, so, you know, I mean, it's just like, uh, well, it's, the, it's, here's, here's what you know. See, look, it's, it's, it's reverbing. Here's what you know the stakes are incredibly high. Like, whenever stakes are incredibly high and you have people who have very, I mean, there's so many people involved who have a complete lack of morals. Like, that's just the, and because a lot of it's based on gambling, like it's always been that, like mm-hmm. it's gambling from it's gambling from top to bottom, right? So whenever you have, never mind like the idea of like the mob is doing this and that, it's not even that. It's like it's powers and principalities, man. Like, and. yeah, you don't think you don't think that big sports gamblers don't have shrines to all kinds of weird demons and gods and stuff. I mean, just the, you know, the, the, the same way that like, uh, the, the narco guys have like, they find the shrines to like Santa Muerte, which is a total demon. Yeah. Right. This is just like when the stakes are high, for sure. There's gonna, there's gonna be the involvement of other small G gods and demons. Like when the stakes are high, period. For sure. You know, and especially, I mean, all the Dominicans in, um, in Major League Baseball. You don't think there's Santeria, like crazy Santeria uh, around baseball? For sure. Got to be. For sure. Got to be. So it's like you can't have a situation where you've got that many demons and gods invoked and uh, and other things aren't happening. I really like this podcast, by the way. I'm just going to say that right now. I really like this. Po- I like that. Like, I like that. I got two dudes, one of them being my spiritual father, just like right there. There's like, oh, yeah, 100 percent. And here's and here's why. And here's why this is like, <laughs> here's some base ideas and why some of the things that you and your good friends and your brothers and sisters <laughs> in Christ have observed, here's why they're probably true in all that stuff. I believe it, man. Uh, it's, it just, it's, it's like Occam's razor, you know? It's like, it's the simplest answer. Mm-hmm. It's the simplest I, answer. I have my distorted voice sounds cool. That's all I'm going to say. You no, yours is, not the, yours is not distorted. It's just us. Oh. It's a, it's us reverbing it's us reverbing through your speakers. You'll see, you'll see it, you'll oh. hear it. Do I need to move move my mic back? I don't, I don't think so. I don't oh. think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Both and. <laughs> it's oh. and it is interesting that it's the first time that this is that this has come up, but there is a lot of spiritual warfare going on mm-hmm. everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, yesterday was brutal. Yesterday was really really brutal. It's like a bunch of stuff happened all at once and um yeah so 
Well, don't uh, forget too, guys, we're coming up on Lent. Yes. And so there's a lot that's happening. I was really trying to talk about the final judgment today. I even watched part of a Jonathan Pajot video. That's how that's how into I was really trying to talk about the final judgment. So but next week. Next time. Next well week. that that well that is next week, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that just, is the topic for next week. We yeah. almost hit it because it was it was it was just just up. So we almost hit it. That's why so I, I was like, I was like, all right, no, meet fair, meet fair. Let's do some last judgment. Let's, let's mm-hmm. talk about last judgment. And then, yeah, but whatever, it's all good. So I think we're about there, mm-hmm. uh, I think. So then uh, I was thinking about this on the car ride home and I couldn't, uh, from taking my sister home earlier. And I was thinking, what song, and then I have a follow-up question, uh, what song, and we're all men here, and we're Orthodox men, so we can admit this because we're we're not, you know, some bravado bull crap. But like, what song always makes you cry? Like Bette Midler, Midler, "Wind Beneath My Wings." Bette Midler, "Wind Beneath My Wings." That's not bad. Cats that's in the not... Cradle. Oh, that's another one, man. That's just... another one. That one just, man. See, like, I don't I'll have cry. I don't have I'll, sons. I'll, I'll I don't have actually, sons. I'll actually cry. <laughs> I'll actually cry on that one. Yeah. Um, Andrew, it's okay. I got a lot of them. I'm a weepy person, um, and not necessarily in like a holy way. It's pretty psychological a lot of the time. But um, uh, there's a couple I got. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. From the Lord of the Rings soundtrack, the Bridge of Casa Dune, like it's so haunting. Um, then there's a not so great movie, although I think it's kind of unfairly maligned, the Cloud Atlas. There's a yeah, like, Cloud like Atlas sextet, and then uh, the very end theme. If you go on, I've already added it to the playlist because I knew I was going to be asking this question tonight. Um, and then there are. Uh, the, there's like a final outro that starts with the piano, just the piano playing like the melody that's going throughout the movie. And then it's like all this like build up. And um, so, and then uh, also uh, there, if you catch me at the right moment, if I'm like really feeling it, even like just like the beginning theme to Star Wars can make me like tear up. Just that. And then like the force theme, and there's like this really, really good um, metal band called Galactic Empire that covers Star Wars songs and they do it in like this proggy metal way and it's super well, well, well done. And this, uh, they cover the Force theme. Da, 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 da. And he just does it like on the guitar and he's like harmonizing. And it's like, whew, oh man, it, it can make me, um, it, and there's a whole host of Star Wars songs that can without a doubt make me tear up. Um, and then the next one I wanted to ask was what movie or like particular scene of a movie or something like that gets you every, every single time. Like every time you watch it, you're like, Oh gosh, like, Ooh, yeah, it's getting me, getting me hard. Cause I got a couple answers there too. As you can tell, I've been thinking about it. All right, I'll go. I'll ramp. I'll vamp. It, no, it's, no, 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 no. It's not accurate to the voice again. It's getting, that was crazy. It's it's, it's really bad crazy. now at this point. <laughs> it's, You'll hear it's, the voices. Yeah. It's not um accurate to the books, but the part who cool, man is so good. During the Battle of Helm's Deep in the movie, when all hope is lost, and then they look up and they see Gandalf with the staff shining like on the ridge, and he's got the, the men of Rohan. Mm-hmm. Um, the writers of Rohan behind him mm-hmm. it's like all hope is lost and then they look to the it's the east right father they look to the mm-hmm. east, the east yeah. yeah it would make sense that it's the east and it's suddenly Gandalf's just standing there and you're like you know everything's going to be cool now like you know everything's going to be cool um then obviously there's a host of different parts from Star Wars that always get me every single time and then uh I mean, I mean, there's a host of Captain America parts too. I'm a weepy person, so 
Now, I can't, I'll tell you, I can't think of a, there are some but it, that have got, that got me maybe on the first go, but they wouldn't get me again. But I'll tell you, I will give you this because it just, because it's coming to my mind and it just recently happened. Um, my mother sent the book, The Velveteen Rabbit. <laughs> okay, yeah. And I read it to my daughter and I had really forgotten the story. I hadn't read it in a long time. And man, by about three quarters of the way through, I couldn't even read the book. Wow. And she was like, she was like looking at me like, what is wrong, Papa? Like, what's going on? And I'm like, I just, I can't. <laughs> it's, too much. it's too much. It's too much. So fair, fair warning. If any of you haven't gone through the Velveteen Rabbit and you're planning on reading it to your kids, just, uh, just beware. <laughs> So I don't know if they made a, a movie of that, but it would probably get me, I think, yeah. if they had made a movie that was pretty did. close to the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I won't be watching that because I'll just be blubbering. Father, you got one? A moment uh, movie, a particular movie is like, gets you every time. Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty weepy about stuff. Um, what was that one with the, 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 the book? The... Uh... The husband and the wife, they get old. The notebook? The notebook. Yeah. Oh, I'm a yeah. sucker. I'm a sucker. Man, that is, that'll do it. Man. Yeah. Oh, man. Family stuff is hard. That's tough. Even like that really terrible movie, the Adam Sandler movie where he gets the remote and then it gets stuck on fast forward. And he watches all of his family like age right in front of him and stuff. Like that's really, really... Even that can be brutal at times, yeah, so depending on the moment. I will tell you this, and I'll end the show with this. I don't know what it was, but I watched Hook. Probably. Oh, like, man. Hook. Yeah. It there you are, you. Peter. As soon as yeah. he says that, I just like, oh, yep. man. Oh, that scene. Yeah, where he's touching on his face. Yeah. Like, there you oh, are, Peter. Yep, oh, that was man. <laughs> I just, oh my gosh, like, yeah. Oh, man. I was ruined for like three days afterwards. And like, I was showing uh, my daughter this Winnie the Pooh cartoon from like the 1970s or something. And like, at the very end, you know, they have their little adventures. And at the very end, like Christopher Walken and, or Christopher, why do I do that? I've done that like two or three times now. Who? Who? What's? Who? What's? <laughs> oh wow, that's not bad. That's actually not bad. Christopher Robin and Pooh are walking. Imagine if Christopher Walken was in Winnie the Pooh. That was absolutely amazing. I would actually really watch that. I would absolutely watch that. But at the end, they're walking, like over a bridge just like talking and stuff and chris robin's like hey Pooh, we'll always be friends right and i'm just like only if you give me more cowbell <laughs> oh, nice <laughs> that's it we're done, we're done. <laughs> but i'm sitting there watching this just trying to like live my life with my daughter <sighs> and it's just like because you know he's gonna grow up and you know all those stuff animals are gonna get stuck in an attic <laughs> You got me, Father. You got me. That was good. That was good. Okay. Christopher Walken. Well. <laughs> what a national treasure. Um, so bad. Yeah. Great. I'm pretty sure he witnessed a murder and did nothing about it. So. What, yep. what's well, your deer hunter? Uh, no, yeah, I've, never, yeah. I've never seen yeah. it. Do no. you sell, yeah, yeah. Deer hunter. Yeah. I think he did legitimately witness a murder, though, and did nothing about it. Like, that rumor is about Phil Collins as well. Hollywood, man. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, uh, so there was something I wanted. We still have the playlist up on Spotify. I'm not going to push that too much harder, too much longer. But um, if we mention a song, I try and get it on there. The so Bet Meddler is going up on there. Um, so is Cat's Cradle. Um, and then. I don't have anything else. Feel free to continue to ask questions. I saw Father got into one of the comments last week and answered a couple of people's questions. So if I see any, I'll try and point him out to Father and see if you can get to him. Um, 
Otherwise, my sign off continues to be thank you for having a good night. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye. bye, -bye.